Right, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, and I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a bit of a throwback football therapy vibe. I don't always do match reviews, but I'm doing a match review for Chelsea's 2-1 win in the FA Cup away against Hull City, seeing them qualify to the next round. A 2-1 win, Chelsea missing loads of chances, a few really poor performances, a couple of good ones. Pretty much a game to sort of personify Chelsea's season so far. And there's a bunch of talking points that I want to get into in today's video. So before we get into the good gear, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if indeed you are new to the channel. Hit the bell notifications icon. Why not like this video? Alright, let's get into it. So FA Cup, Chelsea playing away. Must win, really. I mean... <laughs> It's really weird, right? Because you look at this competition, like, you think, this is a must-win competition. This is a competition that Frank Lampard should win. But now, at the moment, with superpowers, you know, teams like Manchester City, you think, even if you get to the final, it's going to be so, so hard to win. But still, progressing to the final or even semi-final is huge. Especially for a coach like Frank Lampard in his first season. So I'm not going to pull up the analysis screen. I'm going to throw up the who scored graphic to show you the lineups and statistics. Now, hey, have a look at it. Isn't that nice? Are you taking it in? Are you enjoying that? That's nice. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of it. So yeah, Chelsea quite dominant. Loads of chances. <sighs> okay, so... Frank Lampard rotated his team quite heavily, not overly, and there's a few talking points of the in terms of the lineup that he did play. For me, the two glaring issues or hindsight issues in this lineup were two Spaniards. Marcus Alonso at left back and Pedro in the front three. Now I love Pedro Rodriguez. I'm really happy for his time at Chelsea. I think he's been excellent in many ways, often, but he really does look cooked now in this team. Personally, if Frank Lampard was going to do this rotation and still play Mason Mount, I would have liked to see Mason Mount play on the left wing and I would have liked to see Billy Gilmore start who came off the bench and looked very, very good. Failing that, even Tino Andrian in that left back, the amount of times Marcus Alonso got roasted over and over again, gave me heart attacks, conceded the foul, granted it probably shouldn't be a foul uh, that, to the free kick where Chelsea conceded. Ian Matson, wouldn't it have been really nice to see that youngster bomb up and down the left flank rather than Marcus Alonso sort of slowly jog up and down the left flank. So let's take you through the lineup. It was Willy Capellera in goal, which was a welcome sight after some recent worrying performances from Kepa. Not a particular Kepa hater myself, but it was good to see a bit of seniority in that goal just for a game. As Plaqueta at right back played pretty decent as per usual, Mr. Consistent. Not Mr. Amazing, but Mr. Safe Pair of Hands. The centre back partnership consisted of Zuma, who wasn't superb, and Fikai Tamori, who was decent. Uh, decent defensively, got overexcited after scoring a goal and thought he could do everything, but had a good performance from him. The midfield three consisted of Mateo Kovacic, Mason Mount, and Ross Barkley. And the front three consisted of Mishi Batshuayi, who knew well, Tammy Abraham's injured, plus he needs to be rested, and Giroud is not playing until we know what's happening with him being sold or not. The flanks were completed up front with Callum Hudson-Odoi, William rested as the senior winger, 10 years older than Hudson-Odoi, you get like out of the two, he's the one that's going to be rested. And like I said, Pedro. So the goals were scored by Mishi Batshuayi very early in the first half. Uh, sort of a deflected shot coming off it and then he shoots a shot in that's deflected again. You know, you have to be there to score it, but not particularly a magnificent goal, but it's good for the centre forward to get on the score sheet. And it was nice to see Chelsea scoring off a set piece where Fikayo Tomori runs free uh, away towards the far post. Uh, a good run actually, I mean, he was trying, the opposition defender was trying to pick him up, he got free will, he finished decent, good goal from Fikayo Tomori, and pretty much a good performance from him, he won man of the match on BT Sport, so good character building, confidence building performance from Fikayo Tomori. Now, Chelsea conceded in the second half, <sighs> to a free kick to make it 2-1. I'm mad at Alonso in this game, but not for this moment. Although he conceded the free kick, for me, for my money, it was not a foul. So, fair enough, I get it. But the thing is, 
when things are going against you and you're performing badly, this kind of stuff can happen. So whatever, Chelsea can see the free kick. The frustrating part for me is Mateo Kovacic, right, who played really well in the first half, like really well. It looked like he was like this elite superstar midfielder, which in many ways he is, that was playing against lower league opposition, which he was, and he was just doing amazing passes. He got a couple of really good interceptive tackles in. Kovacic looked really, really good. And then, I mean, he got a yellow card as well for a cynical tackle, which wasn't great. I don't think he needed to do that. But he stood in the wall and he just turned away from the ball and put his foot in the air and just like essentially almost finished the goal really nicely to put it in a completely unsavable pos position for Willy Caballero. Now before this goal, I noticed Caballero was screaming at Kovacic. He was going, Mateo! Because he wanted to get him in line and he wasn't listening. And I think Kovacic was a little bit rattled and maybe that affected his, I don't know, his stance and when the ball was coming in. But he turned away and kicked it towards the goal and made an unsavable situation for Willy Caballero. So that was really, really frustrating for Mateo Kovacic. He's gonna be like this hard Croatian dude, you know? Just man up and take the hit. Yeah, anyway, problem performances for me generally were Ross Barkley. I mean, he was okay. I'm not gonna say Barkley. He's been good recently. I'm not one of these people that get on Ross Barkley's back, but he had a couple of poor moments, most notably in the second half where he gave away the ball and Hull went on and very easily could have scored and that would have been all on Ross Barkley. Mason Mount was pretty poor to be honest. Like He didn't have Tammy to combine with who often makes him look better. Mount hasn't been great lately. I would have actually preferred to see him in the left wing position with Hudson Adore in the right wing. I actually think he probably would have played better in that position in this game. But he came off, he did take a bit of a knock and a bit of a battering, but phew, it's pointless criticizing him for that performance in that situation. But when you look at someone like Billy Gilmore who came on and it was excellent and has been excellent, let's be real, right? Whenever Billy Gilmore has played for the Chelsea first team, he's looked really, really good. Like, he's just looked really good. I saw him play live against Grimsby where he bossed the whole entire game at Stamford Bridge. Since then, his cameos, little, I mean, he must have had one or two. He's always looked great in my opinion. So it was great to see him come on. Now, Michy Batshuayi... <laughs> Yes, he got the goal, but generally his performance wasn't amazing. Like, he looks one of these strikers low on confidence, maybe making the wrong decisions. Just all a bit frustrating, really. Hudson Adoy did look good. I understand why Frank Lampard took him off before his home and hosed. Wants to, like, you know, keep him wrapped up or whatever. Fine. And Pedro, man, although he shows these little moments of quality with that chip and a couple of back passes. In terms of how he's integrated, or more importantly, or I was going to say, rather, not integrated into this team is very telling. I think his time at Chelsea is very, very much done. And like I said, Marcus Alonso, I wanted to take a minute to really just say... To... <laughs> right, okay, Alonso. Superb left wing back when he's allowed to camp forward and just occupy a very, very wide position. Sweet left foot, sweet header every now and again when he's asked to run up and down a flank it is very very poor and that was super evident today he was just getting roasted over and over he was getting turned he couldn't recover he was just basically very very poor in terms of the functionality of the team sure he's a great offensive weapon it's not enough even against the championship team because when they got a bit of self-belief in a cup run you can't be dealing with that so Alonso very poor for me. So of course Willian came on, he looked alright, he looked better than a lot of the players on the pitch in terms of the energy levels and running around. He did give the ball away once or something, but generally it was alright Willian coming on. I've already waxed lyrical about Billy Gilmore coming on and looking very good, but in the final seconds Tarek Lamptey came on in the front three, which is really interesting. We've seen him come on against Arsenal at right back and looks very very good, and I think generally by trade you think he is a right back, but Frank Lampard put him in the front three the last two times he's played. Maybe it was against Arsenal, he moved forward into the front three. Certainly, he's done that twice for Chelsea at times, he's, which shows he's got very, well, he's very versatile and can play anywhere along the right flank. Because he's quite small, maybe, and nimble, being in the front three might suit him. But if he shows enough attacking prowess and combinational play, why not have him as an option as a, an attacker in the front three? I think that could be very, very exciting, especially if he is athletic and a fullback by trade, so he's able to get back and cover his fullback. 
Looks very good to me. Anyway, Chelsea are through to the next round. Job done. Away match in the FA Cup. Fair enough. 2-1. Fine. But the thing is, this really did just highlight Chelsea's problems this season. In the first half, certainly in the first 35, 40 minutes of the first half, the majority of the first half, Chelsea had chance after chance after chance, and they were just not putting them away. Granted, in that front three, you had people like Michy Batshuayi, who's probably a little bit low on confidence, short on game time, and someone like Pedro, but for me, Pedro could have gone both ways. It could be, look, elite footballer who's been amazing throughout his career. He might just come on with nothing to lose and express himself, score a goal or two, but... Really, it doesn't look like it's going to pan out like that. It looks like he won't gel with the team and it just won't happen for him with Chelsea now. hudson Adoy did look threatening, but he was more looking to sort of carry the ball up, sort of challenge the defender and bring it back and combine. hudson Adoy has actually been quite professional recently and not just randomly popping shots, trying to make, playing the percentages, do you know what I mean? Like being smart, saying this guy's got a chance to score, but no one scores playing for Chelsea at the moment. Anyway, we move. Chelsea's through to the next round. Hopefully, by the time Chelsea play, the next round came, they'll have another striker on the books. Who knows, maybe even another player. We all know Chelsea like to do business very, very late on in transfer windows. So we'll have to watch that. But generally, Frank Lampard, you'd imagine he would have learned a little bit from this game. Certainly, he won't be happy with Alonso, probably not Pedro either in terms of their performances. He probably would have looked at Billy Gilmore coming on again, looking excellent, going, yeah, all right, I can trust him more. Hopefully, if Chelsea don't get too much of a difficult uh, opponent in the next round, maybe he will start one of these players, and before the end, hopefully, can Chelsea can <laughs> before the end, hopefully Chelsea can run all the way and obviously play a very strong team in the semi-final, and who knows, maybe even final. Anyway, what do you guys think of this game? What are your thoughts? What can you take away from it? Tell me how you feel about player performances. Would you like to see more of Billy Gilmore, Lamptey, etc.? Get down in the comment section below and give me your thoughts and opinions on this game. If you enjoyed this content, me talking about the game, please do like the video and want to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Um, follow me on social media at FootballYannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby